Welcome to the Grit.org podcast with Colby Harris and Brian Harbin. In these episodes, they speak to top achievers in athletics and business to understand the habits and mindset they apply in order to build more grit. Welcome back to the Grit.org podcast. My name is Colby Harris. Alongside me is Brian Harbin, and we're here with today's guest, Rachel Pinus. Rachel, thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. Very excited. Absolutely. A little bit warmer weather here than you're used to up in New York, so yes. I'm sure you're enjoying it this time of year. Soaking while I can. <laughs> yeah. Back to uh, a little cloudier, a little rainier. It's actually raining here today, which is I super know. unfortunate. You know, well, it's been nice every, everything else besides today. Well, good, good. We're excited to have you here today. So Rachel is the co-founder of Roots Marketing Agency. She's a former Florida State University cheerleader. We're going to talk all things sports, entrepreneurship, marketing, social media, content creation. So Rachel, I'll go ahead and kick it over to you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what it is you do. So I'm 24. I currently live in Manhattan, New York City. Um, I'm a co-founder of Roots Marketing Agency. We specialize in social media management, but we also provide services like like email marketing and we do content shoots for clients that are in the area, but we do all things social media to best represent businesses online for all their services and products. Mm. In a nutshell. <laughs> I love it. And where, uh, where did the name Roots come from? So we get that question a lot. And it's funny because we were bouncing around with like a million different ideas and I honestly couldn't even tell you what the other ones were, but we were, came to the conclusion of Roots as in a business needs to know their roots in order for it to grow. Like you have to know what your core Mm. values are. What's your mission? What are you actually trying to do? So then you can best represent everywhere else. Because if you don't know what you're trying to do, like it's, it's a lost cause. Yeah, no, absolutely. I I like that. And, and speaking of kind of to the roots. So tell us about growing up. I think you're born in Chicago, grew up in Tampa and uh, tell us a little bit about that and any defining moments growing up as a kid. Um, defining moments. Well, yes, my whole family on both sides from Chicago, my family was the only one that left Chicago for like the longest time. So we were always taking trips back up there, moved to Atlanta for a little bit, then to Florida, which we were, my family still lives there in Tampa for 15 years. We were pissed when we moved to Florida. Me and my brothers were like, this is horrible. It's so hot all the time. Now I love it. I don't know how anyone lives anywhere else. And I'm saying this as I live in New York, but, um, Defining moments, I would say just moving in general. Granted, I was younger, but I appreciate it more now. Just getting more experience in new places, meeting a bunch of new people. Like, I still have connections in Atlanta and Chicago. And I feel like people that haven't moved a bunch, everything is a hard adjustment because they have never done anything like that before. And now making my decision a year ago to pack up and move my life to New York where I don't know literally anyone to everyone else was like what are you doing like are you scared i'm like honestly like i'm excited i don't know i'm just gonna figure it out when i get there and it's been great so no complaints there yeah I've, i haven't had a chance to go up there yet i haven't been to chicago other than the airport you have to go to chicago i've always heard it's kind of like a hub especially in the it's u.s crazy. i mean I'd probably like top 10 cities to, oh, sure. to visit or to be in i was actually lived in Atlanta for a little bit really? north carolina as well and then i moved to florida when i was in sixth grade so oh, i can yeah. share that what you learned from yes. moving when you said that i was like Psh, we got that going because yes, we talk about that all the time i have three siblings and we're all like what would it have been like if if we didn't move, if we right? didn't go through it? Because we're all super sociable now. Yeah. I love to talk like, to I people. I can't imagine staying in this. And people are like, you've lived in that house your whole life. Like, you've known. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, like, I, I couldn't imagine. I appreciate moving and all the things, but, yeah. And early on, did you have an interest in cheer or was it sports in general? Do you, do you have siblings as well? Yes. So I have two brothers, one older, one younger. My family, like our core values are sports. We joke that our parents aren't our parents. Like they are our coaches. We are members on the team. My whole family calls ourselves Team Pinus. We are the home team. We all were in a bajillion sports. I did everything from soccer, track. In order to get a cell phone when I was in middle school, I had to make the basketball team. So that happened. I played basketball for a little. Um, cheer was a last resort. I was playing tennis for six years, and my mom still to this day plays tennis like in a league all the time every day. And she, both my parents kind of sat me down and were like, Rachel, we'd rather be on the team than cheering for it. I'm like, picture this, it's its own team. And they're like, 
Sure. What? Sign up. You're going to hate it. Whatever. We'll, we'll dodge the bullet later. I loved it. I had the best time. Sent, sent the papers over to my mom. I was like, okay, like signing up for the next year. And she's like, are you serious? And I was like, yep, we're doing it. Into it. So yeah, sports was huge for everyone in my family. And going to FSU was awesome because my parents were like college part two. Like they went to every game and were up every weekend. It wasn't even for me. It was just like be back in college for the mm-hmm. most part. But yeah, sports is a very, very big portion of everyone in my family's life. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure. It's great. And, um, yeah, I've got a, we have a couple, uh, you know, our cousins' daughters are really, really big in, into cheer. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's very acrobatic, very competitive. Um, I did gymnastics for a while, so I have a a whole newfound respect for it. That was early on. I got humbled. I was probably like eight years old when I got into it with a couple of the girl classmates. I had stuff. Mm -hmm. They're like, come try open gym and whatnot. Two, three months in, they were asking me to do too much. I'm like, I'm not ready to break my neck. It's a little scary too. I think that's why I liked it so much because not that I was like the best person at every single sport, but I was like, honestly better than most at like everything I tried. Not that it was like easy, but I don't know. Like I like being in a team, but I also like the individual aspect of cheerleading. So like when you're tumbling, it's only you, but then when you do stunts, it's everybody. So I like that it was a little bit of both because when it was only teams, I'm like, I did amazing and we still lost. Like this sucks. But then when it's only me, I'm like, Mm. I have no one else to blame. Like I'm the only one that screwed up at this. And uh, that was, yeah. So I'm sure it was good. Good outlet for both. Yeah. So tell us why Florida State. How'd you choose Florida State? So that's always a funny question because I feel like anyone that sees me or knows me, like FSU was all around me and it seems like I was the biggest FSU fan forever. Not even close. Um, No one in my family went to like a huge state school. So like we never had like a team we were always rooting for. And then I'm in Florida. I'm applying to colleges. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I didn't know where I wanted to go. So I was kind of just like putting out feelers everywhere. But then I decided I wanted cheer. So I'm like looking at cheer schools, places that people had went that I knew. And truthfully, FSU, the girls that I knew from my cheer gym at home had like not good experiences. It was a lot different back in the day. So everyone was telling me not to go, number one. Number two, I wanted to go out of state so badly. I don't know why. I was just like, everyone's going to go to FSU that I know. I want to start over. I want to like create my own life. So I was kind of set on Clemson. First, I didn't think I was getting in there at all. I had decent grades, but like, you never know. So when I got in the acceptance letter, I was like, we are in there because that true team on paper was easier to make than FSU. So I was like, if I get into the school, we're going. So then we go to FSU, excuse me, we go to Clemson and I was actually the very last person cut from Mm. the Clemson tryouts. And that was the tryout that was still during while I was in high school. It was like the weekend before we were graduated and stuff so everyone knew i was going everyone knew i was trying out i get back to school my principal stops me in the hallway he's like how'd it go and i was like well um yeah i didn't make it so that was fun but so when that happened i didn't know what i was gonna do because my parents were like well do you still want to go to clemson like we'll send you there but like what are you gonna do and i was like they didn't want me i'm not going and so then the other schools I applied to were honestly just random. I was like, I'm not going to spend a crap ton of money to go cross country for no reason. So then I get to FSU for tryouts. I'm like, okay, if I make the team, like it's just a sign, it, it'll all do what it needs to. And surprisingly enough, I made that team, which was immensely harder to make than Clemson. And everything happens for a reason. It was the best four years of my life, mm. met all my best friends, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Mm. And I've visited Tallahassee a few times. I can definitely say it's a good time to oh, get over there and yes. go to the stadium. We had a someone we went and watched. They were playing actually for Samford, but I went oh. to a Samford Tallahassee okay, FSU yeah. game, um, and it was awesome. But do you have any favorite memories from that time at FSU, or, or maybe it was within Cheer as well? It was definitely within Cheer. I I can't even express how much fun I had at FSU. Loved my time there. School was amazing. Cheer was amazing. But my favorite things from cheer, I would say there's not like one specific like moment or competition or I don't know. I would say just spending quality time with like my best friends when we're traveling, we're going to away games, even just like the horrible weeks of practices and like the crazy camps we had to go to. It was fun because we were all in it together. And I honestly, I met all my best friends there. So Mm -hmm. I owe FSU a lot. FSU cheer for Mm -hmm. sure. And you did, was it, uh, cause I think they have separate teams for football and basketball, right? Yes. So you worked with specifically the, 
we did all of them. We did football, basketball, and we did volleyball, surprisingly. Hmm. But yeah, so we did all the football games, all the basketball games, all the volleyball games. Sometimes there's an overlap of all three of those sports. So like you have three different games, maybe even four in one week, and then you have three practices, you have two lifts, you have cardio day. There's a lot going on hmm. in cheer for sure. Game day is still game day. When game you're on day is still game team. day. Hmm. Absolutely, game day is the best. What about any um, any takeaways that you felt like you learned from that, or any you know most memorable experience from? The four I years? would say learning a lot from sheer definitely things including working and working well with all different kinds of people because you know you shove 30 girls that are 19 years old in a confined space it's you got a lot of personalities in there <laughs> and like you're supposed to work together and you're dropping people and people are getting hurt so especially not even at FSU like throughout the years of cheerleading dealing with interesting coaches, interesting people you're working with, stunting with, like you're this close to at all times, you have to trust them with like your whole life and people's life. That was definitely an interesting task that I very much appreciate and does well with pretty much every part of life now. And I would say time management, because as I just gave you a little snippet of like a week in cheerleading while you're also taking six classes and trying to graduate and get straight A's and find a job, it's a lot and um, mm -hmm. learning to get a lot of things done in the 15 free minutes you have during the day is a vital skill mm -hmm. that has done well for me now. <laughs> yeah. And I was going to ask my philosophy with college kind of a little bit of, of what you just said, of like you didn't really know what you wanted to do, but you knew you liked cheer, yeah. uh, which is kind of like I just told you, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I was looking at going and joining the surf team at UNF just because I knew that's where my passion was. So I always advocate for people. It's like, if you don't know what you want to do, it's a great place to buy back some time oh, and like explore your options. Is there any advice you would have for somebody going through that same process or any philosophies you found uh, that you would want to share to someone that's looking at going to college or navigating those next steps? I would say keep an open mind because I honestly had written off FSU and that whole path, but it was like my safety school. I was not on my radar. You never know what the opportunity that lies ahead of you mm. can hold. And testing different things out like once you get to a college testing classes out different routes of industries you could go into you don't know what you don't know so you might like something you never thought of you might not like stuff you thought you were going to like so having an open mind is definitely important and you're only 24 now so i'm assuming that roots marketing agency was either in the back of your mind or front of mind when you were first leaving florida state Tell us more about those next steps once you graduate, whether you were going all in on the business right off the gate, why or why not. Just and tell us a little bit more about when you were first graduating and what the plan was. So, um, yeah, it was an interesting time, to say the least. COVID was happening, so that was a whole other situation that no one knew how to navigate. So, honestly, I give a lot to COVID because although it was probably the worst time ever for everyone in the world, but... I had no idea what I wanted to do and people would ask me and graduation's approaching and like junior year going to senior year people were like so like what are you going to do I'm like I have literally no idea I haven't even thought about it but if that didn't happen I probably would have you know just went to the career fair got a job sales probably but as senior year was happening and our friends are doing just that me and Jenna my partner we're like I don't I don't want to do that like I don't want to get a random sales job and move across country and sell I don't know some IT product that I don't care about well some people do it and do it really well and they love it more power to you I did not want to do that so we were like we just need one idea like what could we do to get things started I was helping with social media for the cheer team Jenna my partner was on the dance team at FSU she's helping with their social media both of us had jobs outside of cheer so we were kind of helping with their social media and stuff. And we had literally seen a TikTok um, of this woman and she was about our age and she was saying she started this marketing agency doing exactly what we're doing. Hmm. And she's making like crap ton of money. And we're like, we could do this. You could pay for this. So that's kind of how Roots was born. And so we didn't really tell too many people while we were like kind of behind the scenes, like looking up how to get an LLC, like what's a domain, all those kinds of things. And once that was all kind of wrapped up and ready to go i can't even lie i was i was the one that was like very apprehensive i was like i don't like we don't really know how this is gonna go we're gonna tell everyone that we like started this whole business i don't know i had then started working part-time for my dad's insurance company right after we graduated we launched the business 
April Fool's Day of all days, actually, <laughs> right before graduation. But so we were doing that. We had a couple clients lined up, but it was kind of half that, half working from Tampa still. We just graduated with my dad's insurance company. And um, for a while, like it was good. And I still do marketing for my dad's and company, but it was, I was having issues with balancing. Like when you're kind of half in a lot of things, you're kind of not doing much of anything in the grand scheme of things. So I had to take a step back and be like, okay, we're not getting anywhere here doing this. So you're either going to have to like go all in or opt out and find something else to do. So that was kind of when I made the decision of, all right, I'm going to do this for real. I also started modeling a little bit on the side. So I signed with a modeling agency in New York. So my partner who lives up there, she was begging me to come. She's like, just move up here. I'm like, I'm just going to pick up and move. So then between deciding I wanted to do a full time, like go all in. And then I signed with the modeling agency. I was like, literally everything is pointing to you need to go to New York. Once you get there, if you hate it, we can reevaluate then. But again, you don't know till you go. So I went and that's kind of how it all came together. And that was really the catapult of our whole business and getting things rolling because we went from like maybe five clients and now we have like 25 and growing and employees but yeah i was i was a slow mover if we did not have jenna this this company would not come to be that is for sure yeah well it sounds like you guys complement each other well and i think having sounds like you guys were friends in college which yes. is a good base and then um you know, going up to New York. So tell us about kind of once you got up to New York and, you know, like you said, you had a couple clients with the cheer team and the dance team, but, you know, how did you prospect for new clients or, you know, I'm, I'm guessing some referrals there, but even then, how did you go about getting referrals and, and expanding from five up to 25? Yeah. So that was an interesting task and people ask this a lot. It really, it's a numbers game. You know, you got to, you can't be upset about the nose because there's going to be a lot of them. We were on platforms like Upwork and Indeed, like freelancer website kind of things. So you go on there and you can see companies that are looking for a social media manager, mm. excuse me, a digital marketer. They need help. So you already know they have the need. And then you just start sending proposals, copy and paste, like as many as possible. I don't even know what the number would be of how many people we had reached out to. But yeah, it was cold calling, emails, messaging them on social media, walking into businesses that we already went to, like around where we live. Um, it was a little different for Jenna and I because Jenna is from New Jersey. So her family, like she's a lot of ties there. She knows a lot of people. Her parents are very well connected. So thankfully they gave us a lot of leads and like spread our name everywhere. So that was nice in the beginning because they fed us a lot of companies to work with. But while they did definitely gave me some, like by all means, that was kind of Jenna's scene. And then I show up and I'm like, I don't know literally anyone here. And I was the apprehensive one. So I was like, this is going to be, this is going to be interesting. But um, something about moving to a different city where you don't know anyone, that was kind of like a freeing scenario. Like I felt, I felt like I could walk in anywhere and start handing my cards or talking about my business and not feeling like they're judging you or like they have preconceptions of like what you should be doing or they know like what you do or how you should have been doing. So I would say it was definitely interesting moving there and not knowing anyone, but the way we, we really got things going was swallowing our pride and sending out as much information to everyone we could mm. and things stuck after a while. It's a numbers game. Mm. And you've said too a little bit, I want to revisit this about Jenna too, because we want to try to find a way to get I her know. involved today. And uh, yeah, just with all the post-production and things like that, yeah, you get, yeah. like it's just easiest with that. We got two nice Sony cameras here. Exactly. If, uh, if we could have <laughs> shipped one out to her, maybe yeah. it would have worked. Um, but yeah, I just want to ask you a little bit more about that and, and working with Jen, because obviously it kind of happens in stages, right? Right. And now you guys are in a thriving stage where you're growing, you're hiring right. more employees, and I'm sure the vision is clearer than ever. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit more about how you guys have cultivate that relationship from friends to kind of new, you know, teaming up as entrepreneurs. Yeah. And then now like full on, you guys have been growing and, and running this business together for a little while. Yeah. So people ask us a lot, like, how do you work with your best friend? And to answer that, she is probably the only friend out of all of my friends and love you all that I could ever work with. Um, we're both very rational people. So in college, she was on the dance team. I was on the cheer team. The teams didn't really mingle for the most part, but me, her and I got connected. She was in a bunch of my classes, actually. But she and I have a very strong, like, 
willpower to succeed always. Like nothing has stumped us yet. Nothing's going to stump us. I mean, there's going to be bumps in the road at, at all stages of life and through this business. But she is also a problem solver like I am. And she thinks in the same kind of respect that I do. Like we're very rational seeing all sides of the story before we like make decisions. So she has helped a lot. And like I said, she is the, the reason this business even got off the ground because we complement each other in a lot of ways. And in the starting, she was the one that was like, we got to go. Like we'll figure everything out else later to start it and we'll figure it out. So that's kind of how it happened with us. But you have to, there's a, some level of being able to have tough conversations with your friends or your business partners you have to kind of put the friend role aside and sit down and be like this didn't go well this isn't going well how can we adjust it and both of us take those conversations very well so when we have to sit down and check each other like we don't take it personally so that really is the main reason that we're able to keep this rolling yeah and i think it's super important to to always remember like you know you want to always say it's like oh it's 50 50 and right but you know some days you're gonna have personal things come up where it's Absolutely. like you need the business part so i want to tell you hey like remember when we talked about doing this well hey we need to like exactly. get back on our high horse and keep things going and definitely i could imagine it's a little hard like uh, grant with me and brian of course and, and anyone else we work with it's very much like you know kind of those different experiences right different exactly. kind of generations but i would imagine that you two being so close in age and then obviously kind of having history together that um, you guys are kind of learning alongside each other. You oh, know, he absolutely. saves me a lot of time. Yeah. That's for sure. Exactly. Um, Brian saves us a lot, a lot of time, but learning yeah. together through that process, I'm sure that definitely deepens it as well. Yes. 100% because, you know, we went to business school. We, we did the whole thing. They didn't teach me anything about how to start a business. Like I, not one thing. We didn't realize how much we didn't know until we were starting. Like, it's honestly comical. We were like calling our dads. We're like, so what does this mean? They're like, what did you learn in school? I'm like, not this. But um, both of our parents are also entrepreneurs. So that's, we both kind of have an entrepreneurial mindset. But yeah, no, our dads are on speed dial for this past year and a half, two years. Every question we're like, I don't, what do you mean file taxes? How do we do that? Like every, there was so much we didn't know. But um, yes, the fact that she is willing to learn as much as I am, that, I mean, that's the key to any business, any industry you're in, everything's gonna change from year to year, day to day. So if you're not willing to learn and grow with the industry that you're in, like it's just not gonna happen. And yeah. both of us are, so. Yeah, no, I love that. And, and that's what's so unique about entrepreneurship is that every day is different and, and you know, gets you out of your comfort zone. Oh, yeah. And um, so I'm curious, like, can, is there an example of like an obstacle or challenge or something where you hit a wall that you guys had to kind of figure it out and overcome that? Any uh, particular challenge that stands out that you guys have faced kind of initially? For me, especially, it would be like your first really difficult client because, you know, we're young, we're we're girls saying that we're starting this industry or this business and we we can help you and do all these things, which we can and we do. But, you know, not all people mix and sometimes not a good fit on their end or our end and having my first client that very disrespectful, they're older gentleman that, you know, maybe thinks he knows more than I do. People that are not really up to date with like how marketing works in this day and age and like social media is necessary for every business but um yeah like when you are on a phone call with a grown man they're yelling at you and telling you you don't know anything and that you shouldn't be starting a business it's a humbling experience to say the least um i would say that was my biggest roadblock it's like a knock to the confidence for sure both of us have had our fair share of these things happening but that's kind of what you said before like the when she's down i'm up when i'm down she's up so we're always helping pull each other through i don't know how anyone does this by themselves like i know people that do what we do and they're it's just them i could never because when you have a bad day well it's hard to pick yourself up by yourself but yeah i would say that was probably the biggest roadblock because once your confidence is knocked down it's hard to get not only the things you need to do accomplish but like then to grow your business it's, it's very difficult. Right. And, and sometimes you feel like, oh, well, everybody must feel like that, exactly. you know, and you kind of internalize it. So I'm curious too, like what, what is kind of your pitch? Like when you meet somebody and, and they ask, well, what is it, you know, why do I need um, a marketing agency to, to help me? Yeah. So we kind of say in today's day and age, marketing has changed so much. No longer do people have to walk and drop off new newspapers at your door every single day. Like they're faster and more effective ways of getting information to people. So 
it's just so you have to stay up to date with what goes on. I mean, every business in any industry needs to be on social media. And you have to think of it as your online portfolio. It's essentially like your mini elevator pitch without saying words of what your business is, how it's helpful, and why someone else would need to be a part of it. So we usually, if we walk in somewhere, we like look them up before and say, you know, you have a lot of great stuff, you have great products, you have great services, but there are better ways to present these things and reach more people. And that's really the thing. Like social media is helping every business reach more people than they normally would. Before, if they weren't on your block or in the relative area, no one's going to hear about your business. And a lot of companies can't pay to go on commercials and spend thousands and thousands of dollars. This is the most effective way to reach as many people as possible and get the word out about your business. So having a social media man- manager do it for you, not only will be better, it gives you time to focus on what their actual role is in the business. The owner of the business shouldn't be focusing on taking pictures and finding captions and hashtags. It's just not their job. Even eight, two years ago, the the role social media manager didn't exist. Like that word did not exist. And mm-hmm. now pretty much every company, that's a full-time hire right there. So another little pitch that we would say is, I mean, instead of hiring a full-time employee, like we're a freelancer, third party, realistically, it's going to be cheaper for your business to do it this way and you need it. So it's either pick this or you're going to have to get somebody on salary and try to train them in something that you don't know how to do. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think the most important thing that, that people need to understand is like the cost of acquiring your customer. Oh, I mean, if you look at, um, I'm sure, you know, Alex Hermosi, mm-hmm. um, he's an awesome entrepreneur. His wife is Layla Hermosi. I would definitely oh, recommend you for They, they have a, they're, they're incredible. And his wife is awesome too. I've actually brought him up on probably like the last three podcasts because <laughs> I'm pretty <laughs> obsessed with it. Yeah. And everyone should be watching, but that's what he talked about this most recent event. He did a book launch. He had 500,000 people on right. a live zoom event. And he said, it cost me all in all, $2 per head to do all this because he spends $60,000 a month on content. He's like, yeah. we didn't run a bunch of ads, but like for what I got out of this, if it would have been through paid ads, I would have spent, um, I think it was $3.1 million on advertising to get the wow. amount of reach that he had received. Cause it was, you know, hundreds of millions yeah. of views. Um, but if you wanted to talk for a second, just about like content creation in general, what, what do you think most people need to understand? Not just like, so you, they, they get that they have to have a social media. Mm-hmm. What do people need to know when it comes about actually producing content? Um, content is key. So having good content is definitely crucial because you want to, present your business product service in the best light it can be. But it's, you really have to meet your potential customer consumer where they're at and where they're at is on their phone. It's whether it's TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, the platform may vary depending on like age group and whatnot, but that's kind of another key seller of why people need to get on it because that is where your consumers are. So you, in, front, in order to get in front of them, you need to get on their phone. So that's number one, but I would say, remembering that it is your online portfolio. And if somebody didn't know anything about your business and somehow end up on your page, would they be able to figure out who you are, what you do and how to get in contact with you? Those are the three most important things. And then lastly, I would say equally as important is consistency because the start of anything is it's slow rolling for sure, but you don't know what's going to happen until you keep at it. And the more you put, more, the more you produce, the more your reach is, and the more eyes are going to be on your page, your name getting in front of, you know, consumers. And they say it takes seven times for you to promote something or for somebody to see your company's name for them to then make any sort of action. So seven is a lot, honestly, but mm-hmm. that just shows like you have to be consistently putting things out for people to take action anyway mm-hmm. towards your business. Yeah. I was uh, curious, kind of along those lines, you know, is there a different rule of thumb depending on the platform in terms of how often you should post? (laughs) Yeah. So that's like the hot topic. Everyone's like, what's the magic number? There is no magic number and everything kind of depends on the type of industry or type of product you're promoting type per se. But I would say normally we see the best results with like three to four times a week on Instagram. TikTok is an interesting case where it's not as much the quality of your content. It is the quantity. So 
I mean, this is a rule of thumb pretty much for all platforms. They, it's designed for you to stay on the app. Like you will get rewarded for the more you use the app. So the more you're posting, the more you're engaging with other people, your posts will then be promoted on the algorithm to be pushed out to more people. So the more, the better, truthfully. Yeah. And then, so with these customers, I know you said that you're kind of putting the, uh, the content out there. So do you, where do you get like your footage and, and pictures? Like, do you go get a bunch initially from them or do they send it to you and then you work with what they send you? It's a little bit of both. Okay. Depending on if the client is like in our area, we provide content shoots. So we get the photographer, videographer, we make the shot list, we show up, take photos and videos of literally everything we can to ensure that like we have enough to use mm. to then create the content, edit the videos, make all the graphics and whatnot. But if the client is not in range, um, yeah. So we start off saying, send us over everything you have, like branding, all your logos, any in every picture or video you have that somewhat relates to your business. And then we go from there. And then if we do run out, we help them then create their own content shoot so they know what to do. We can get everything we need and go from there. Yeah. And I mean, there's so much uh, pre-planning that goes into that because you really have to study their business, their content. Yes. And, but I feel like there's an extra layer of, um, of what they get from you guys is that here's somebody that's coming in looking at your business from a totally different angle. And you're also finding kind of a new way to attract people that generally speaking, they're not going to have found on their own. Exactly. Um, and kind of a new target market potentially. 100%. And I think that's what a lot of our value comes from. Cause you know, a lot of the businesses that we encounter or know of the people that own it are not usually 24 years old. So they grew up in a different era. They have a whole different like toolbox of knowledge in there. So not only are we like coming to help promote their business and whatnot, but yeah, we have new and innovative ideas of, to do so that they wouldn't get on their own. But yeah, definitely it keeps it interesting. And I would say being young and right out of college and kind of at the boom of everything changing right now, it gives us like a little edge compared to other agencies that have been marketing forever. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I love the the fresh eyes concept. I mean, there's even times I ask my 11 year old, I say, Max, what do you think of this? And it's like, they say something and it's actually really profound. Yeah. Like, wow, I never even thought of it that way. Yeah. You know? like and every uh, call we go on, I swear people are like, so I was asking my, my 16 year old daughter and she said that we had to talk to you guys because yeah, I don't know anything she's saying and she keeps telling me things to do and I have no idea how to do them. Like mm -hmm. she's probably right. <laughs> And you said again, this is kind of, I'm assuming that you probably post a good amount on social media, whether it's your personal page, your personal LinkedIn, or through the, the company yeah. account. So I personally, I've always enjoyed making content. I yeah. think it's fun making videos uh, ever since I was a kid. Like I made vines 10 oh, years ago, vine. like the little six second one. Yes. You couldn't edit it, couldn't do anything. You could only record and upload. That was it. Um, and always had fun doing it. So I want to ask you, is that just, where did you find that passion for yourself? And then also now to help other people do that? Um, I, me and my friends have always loved taking pictures and creating aesthetically pleasing social media pages when it was like Tumblr and, you know, it's changed a million times, but I've always liked that stuff. So that was always my cup of tea. And then this kind of all worked out of mm. things I already like to do, but I would say, wait, what did you ask? What was the second part of that question? No, just uh, finding the passion for creating oh. content and for other people as well, helping them. Yeah. So yeah figure out what you like to do. There's a million different ways to present your business and ideas online. But even like with our company, people love day in the life. Jenna loves making those. I hate making those. So she makes those, but I make carousel graphics. I do the quotes. Like mm. I, you have to find what you like doing and then build off of that. Because if not, it's, it's dreadful. Like yeah. you have to find stuff that you actually enjoy doing. And that's what we say to clients of like, what part of your business like do you enjoy the most? Like, what could we highlight that you, it it reflects off if they love doing it, and then people can see that. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like when you have them take videos of explaining their business or parts of their business, you can see when people light up about certain parts. So like, take that and run with it. And something I want to ask you on that note is about how you encourage people to get to that point because it can be scary to start oh, making yeah. content and get in front of the camera. We I don't know if you're familiar with the Toastmasters. It's a, a public speaking group. They're no. over a hundred years old. Uh, Brian and I started going earlier this year just to help with like the podcast, public speaking, right. sales, you name it. Um, but some people they're like 
like I have to get in front of one person, two people, or even right. a camera. No one's in the room. I can't look at the camera and do exactly. this. How do you help people get over that? Or, or, or what do you, you know, because if someone's terrified to do it, it's going to take a little bit of coaching to get them yes. there. So what do you do in that situation with a client? I mean, you have to be patient with them, but you just kind of have to instill confidence and reassure them that, especially in today's day and age with social media, the more authentic and like real it is, the better it'll perform. Excuse me. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not a commercial. If you screw up and fumble your words, people, honestly, those types of content do better because somebody seeing it is like, oh, they're a real person. Like that wasn't scripted. They actually are like speaking from what they know and what they think is real. So keeping it um, authentic is very important. So if they are super scared, like, you know what, start with just the audio. I'll put something together of what you're talking about as you're talking about it, but it's not your face first. So you get comfortable just even speaking on film. And then from there, then we'll get the face in there. I mean, it, it definitely is more effective with a face to a product brand, anything, but some people are definitely timid and understandably. So I feel like growing up everything in marketing up until pretty much now has been edited, super curated, needs to be perfect. And now it's like totally flipped. So that gives people a little more comfort and kind of getting warmed up on social media. But yeah, I would say baby steps. Mm -hmm. If it's really something that's like scary to you, take it slow. Like you, you'll warm up to it the more you do it. Cause every little piece you put out, you see all of the feedback and like how well it does. So it's, it's gradual. Yeah. It only takes one of those comments that are like, yo, you helped me so much, or this is so valuable. I'm sending this to everyone. I know right. that sort of stuff. I mean, cause now there's probably one in every 20 that might be like positive. Not everything's right. positive. Oh, no, um, but when you get that one that, that really hits home, it's like, wow, I'm, I actually understand why I'm doing this. Exactly. Cause that is the whole reason why you do it. And then hearing the validation, it's like, okay, I'm doing something right. It's not only for me, it's hel it helps other people. And yeah, social media is very powerful. I will say positive or negative. That's for sure. But um, yeah, it can do a lot of, do a lot of good. What about advice as an entrepreneur? I mean, you know, so obviously you guys um, have a good base of clients. You've got a great office. You're, you know, comfortable with your pitch, you know, exactly what you're doing. How do you figure out like what your next area to focus on is for growth or, or where do you see the next step is for you or, or where you guys are going to be in a year or two or any plans along those lines? So we actually are lucky enough to work with one of our clients is a business consultant. So she comes in with us like every quarter to like, look at all the numbers, do all our projections, our goals. So that is very helpful for sure. Mm -hmm. But I would say, we want to grow it as big as it can go. We want to have a whole bunch of employees. They're out getting their own clients. They're, they're building their book, making money. And, you know, at some point we're going to be running the business instead of being in the business. But um, I would say to anybody that's starting a business, just being able to always have like the student hat on, like you're always learning. And especially with social media, it changes hour to hour, day to day. So if you are not willing to always put in the work to learn and grow, it's, it's not going to work out. So that is a very key factor in starting any business of any kind. Hmm. Yeah. And that applies to us even. We've had, uh, we've been kind of going to the drawing board a little bit with our content lately of just like, hey, you know, some of this was really popping off. Like mm -hmm. every day it was like guaranteed, uh, thousands of views like just yeah, guaranteed because it exactly. was we knew what we were the rolling with rolling yeah out. like mainly with the podcast clips and how i format them and stuff and then sometimes recently i'm like mm, that was like in my head that was a good video <laughs> that you know like, all the time. i knew that was gonna be a decent one it did yeah. nothing uh so kind of trying to keep that on just like you said is, has been super important something yes. i'm sure you have to remind yourself sometimes as well yes and like a bunch of our tiktoks it's like kind of our personality on social media but it's like joking around being like it's a post that I just spent three hours making that's gold got like three views. Like, mm -hmm. like what happened there? But then you never know. You could repost it again in 10 days and it could have 3 million views. So yeah, it's, it's always, it's always changing. Yeah. And one of the things you said earlier, which we heard this in the beginning and we've definitely seen it to be true as well. It's just consistency. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, you're not that you can't expect to put out two or three videos and want them to pop off. I mean, it's, 
It's just forming the habit of doing it consistently. And at some point, if something does hit, then it actually helps everything previously. That you, I mean, exactly. look, anybody that made a Deion Sanders video in the last couple of years, exactly. everybody's going back to watch it now. Right. right. And so not that, you know, any business is necessarily going to pop off like that to that extent. But the point is, is that it just takes one and yeah. you don't know who's going to see it, where they're going to exactly. see it, who's going to share it. And you that's know. why you have to post stuff that you actually enjoy posting because whatever does pop off, that's indicating to you that people that you're looking to market to enjoy that piece of content. If you didn't like, if you really don't like that kind of content, you're going to dread making that for the rest of time. So you got to put out stuff you like and it's effective. Yeah, definitely. We just had a bodybuilder from Tampa, Matt Grego, who you might not recognize his name. He just moved down there. So he not, yeah, has, hasn't even been there a month yet, but we talked a lot about that. I mean, cause now he has over a million followers across all platforms. Yeah. And he talked about going through that for a while. He was like, man, I just got to the point where like, I knew what I liked making. It really wasn't what was hot. Tried right. doing some other stuff. And then next thing I know, I didn't post for a month because I was like exactly. so burnt out on the content thing just because it really wasn't what I enjoyed anymore. Right. Um, moving into another question, I want to ask you, so like, you know, you got the business, you're fresh up to New York, you guys are thriving. You obviously have to dabble in leadership and getting the team going because oh, you got yeah. all these other people under you. But for you personally, do you have any habits for success or daily routines that you try to incorporate to keep you level-headed amidst all this madness? Yes. And it's funny you ask that because I'm such a routine person. Like I, when in doubt, like have to go back to my routine to like put myself in my Zen per se. Mm -hmm. But my partner is like, so not like this. So she willy nilly is fine all the time. And then when something goes wrong, she's like, just go back to your routine, Rachel. Like you'll, you'll be better. So my routine is I need to work out like have to, have to probably ingrained, like you said, from my family and the sports and I've always worked out, but that is like my release. Like it's, it's, it's my free therapy of getting everything out that I need to. It feels good. I feel good after. So that's number one for sure. And then I would say more recently in the past like year, I started journaling, which I kind of thought was like some woo woo and whatever. People are like, it helps. I'm like, okay. But now that I've been doing it, um, it does. I'm not going to lie. That is a big factor here that not only kind of gets everything that's in your head jumbled up on paper and like clears it out but it um I like to write down the wins like I make sure to big wins small wins because when you get in your ruts of like I don't want to post for a month like I don't I don't like what I'm doing right at this very moment you can go back and see like all the good things that have happened thus far and kind of get your momentum back rolling but yeah that that's my those are my two things that really have to happen for me to like stay in the zone and like stay focused and get things moving the way they mm -hmm. should be. And you just said something about falling out of your routine sometimes, because I think I feel like that's something that I've learned to in the past year, go a little bit easier on yourself with that sort of stuff. Like if you because, you know, hustle culture obviously is very yeah. strong these days where it's like you know, like David Goggins, like there's no such thing as a part time <laughs> savage, <laughs> no such thing as a part time savage, you know, and yeah. for a while I was like fully bought into this oh, whole yeah. thing and, and you end up being pretty hard on yourself of like, you know, if I didn't work out or if I didn't do everything to a T, mm -hmm. um, you know, it kind of makes you feel bad and puts you in that rut where it might've been a couple of days or um, maybe sometimes even like a week yeah. uh, before you've done. So how do you try to pull yourself out of those, like get back to your routine, not just like getting to the routine itself, but what kind of drives that to, to pull you back in? That is like the question that everyone needs answered, including myself, but truthfully, it really just comes down to like discipline. Like I'm a very disciplined person and I feel like that comes into play. You're not always going to want to do everything. I don't want to get up to go to work. I don't want to make this content. I don't want to go meet with this new potential client. But if you have the discipline, you do it anyway. That That's the only way to get it done. And then right when you get back to working out for the first time, you don't want to be there until you're halfway there and you're like, okay, like I feel a little better. Like, honestly, this is kind of nice. And then the momentum starts rolling from there. It's really just scraping it together and being like, I have to, because it's one of those things, you know, that's going to help you, but you just don't feel like doing it. So you just, you have to, you get up and you do it once and then it starts rolling again, you fall into a rut and then make yourself do it again. And that's the only way to do it. I, I wish there was like a magic potion or like a little mantra I could say that just like clicks everything back into place. But that's not it. It's just pure willpower of, I don't want to feel like this anymore and I want to get back on my game. So let's get to it. Mm. I've got uh, one more question I was going to ask you. So you're the, the youngest female entrepreneur we've, we've had on. And, <laughs> and I wanted to ask too, just for um, any advice you have, you know, whether it's 
um, that you would have as, as a, you know, female entrepreneur that's, um, you know, reflecting back anything that you are glad you did, anything you wish you would have done differently, anything along those lines that you could maybe offer as advice for anybody out there? Yeah. So it's kind of all wraps in one of what we did versus what I wish I had done. Just start. Cause I was the one I was like, Jenna, like maybe, maybe in a month from now or like maybe next week. And she's like, we're posting it today. We're telling everyone we know. And I'm like, okay, let, let, let's do it, Jenna. But that's that's the only way to do it like you have to and at, the longer you wait the more in your head you get so like you think you're like overthinking things now if you wait three months you're going to be in a whole other spell of all of these potential problems that could happen but you don't even know what the problems are until you get there so like start you make adjust our whole mantra is everything is figure outable because it is you start you adjust later if something comes up and say they say can you do this Yes, figure it out later because you you will and you you can. So I would say just sending it because if you don't, it's going to eat you alive. Number one and number two, you're going to regret not doing it. And if it doesn't work out, it's it's just not a, it's not a, it didn't work out. It's now an adjustment to something else. And you learned that you either didn't like doing this or this wasn't going to work the way you thought it was going to, but it pushes you into something else. So I am a firm believer. Everything happens for a reason. So start and it will roll how it's supposed to. Love it. Mm. Yeah. Really overcoming that analysis paralysis. Oh God, like, it's the worst. You have to do it like a, f- a full send. I mean, you, cause if you kind of dabble in it, you're almost like leaving what you're trying to figure out still on the table. You're like, exactly. I'm going to avoid this portion of it. Cause I don't know yeah. what I want to do yet. Um, well, it's been awesome having you here today. Go ahead and uh, before we roll into our last question, if you will, uh, go ahead and shout yourself out with all your handles, the business handle. If someone wants to work with you, how could they get in touch with you? Yes. So our Instagram is Roots Marketing Agency. Um, same thing on TikTok, pretty much every social media. It's just at Roots Marketing Agency. Um, on all the platforms, our contact information is in there. So you can just click a button. Our email is jenna.rachel at rootsmarketingagency.com. And yeah. Quick other question, because uh, I think Brian will like this question too. I do have a question about your domain as well. You mentioned earlier you didn't really know anything about domains. Oh, yeah. It's Roots Marketing Agency. Roots Marketing Agency LLC. Ah, it's okay, the official cool. Domain name. Nice. Yeah, I was kind of thinking about. I was like, I mean, if you Roots Marketing Agency by itself was probably like, I mean, that's pretty pretty like high acquired domain. I would assume like that would definitely draw a lot of attention. Um, or be that's some, your site, right? Is Roots Marketing yeah. Agency dot com? Yeah. Say LLCs on the end, or no? It's just Roots Marketing. Oh, Agency. that's the best. Yeah. I got yeah. you. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, that was that was something. So was that out. going through that process a bit of a up and down, and um, or were you guys able to just scoop it up pretty quick? For somehow we were able that we just typed it in and it was available, and we're like, click to it right now. <laughs> Literally, it was like yeah. I don't know what this means, but yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll figure all the rest out again. Overcoming that analysis paralysis. Everything, everything's figureable. Well, like Brian said, that you've been our youngest entrepreneur in general, actually, to be on the show up to this point. So it really been awesome to have you in today. As you know, we finished everything out on the show, asking everyone uh, what part of the Grit Creed resonates most with you and why? I loved the Creed, not going to lie. I would say the parts that resonated with me the most was that I am calm, cool, calm, and collected. I am mentally, physically, and emotionally resilient. I love that because it's funny, this is like called Grit. Grit is like my word. Like that is the word that my parents used to describe me. And then my other word is resilient because I feel like that encompasses like everything I'd ever want to be. Nothing has stumped me yet. Nothing's going to stump me in the future. Like we just talked about, everything's figure outable. It's not a no, it's a redirection. So that's me in a nutshell. And I, I love Creed. And just again, a little follow up. What does grit mean to you exactly? Grit means to me, it's like you're scrappy. Like you, against all odds, will figure it out. You will do anything necessary to get to where you want to be. Mm, love that. Yeah. We always get a different answer. That's why I love I asking. Know. Cause it's like, if you go by the book, everyone kind of knows the book definition, but they're like, ah, that's not like kind of made my own. Yeah, but, no, literally. I'm like, yeah. I don't know what the actual definition is, but that's in my head what it is. <laughs> scrappy. That's something I would put, I mean, I could honestly write like a half a book for a single yeah. definition for right. it. Right, seriously. But thanks again, Rachel, for coming on today. Uh, we'll attach all your handles and uh, we'll make sure send some clients over there to Roots yeah. Marketing Agency. Hopefully you're enjoying your trip down here. Definitely. That's a wrap today at the grit.org podcast. Be, to, be sure to check out all their socials. Visit rootsmarketingagency.com. Share this episode with someone you think it would resonate with or impact. As always, we appreciate you tuning in for another episode of the grit.org podcast. Thanks.